So what I'm doing now is I'm tillering the bow. I've got a tillering tree set up, which is basically just a, a long piece of wood or anything. You can do it on a wall and you want to put a part to where you can hold the riser of the bow. I've got a piece of wood here and then I've reinforced it with a clamp. And so what that's going to do is hold the bow for me to, to draw it and then I will measure for, uh, from the deepest part of the grip down to my draw length. So right here, that's 26 inches. That's my draw. That's what I'm uh, measuring the weight of the bow at. I've got a scale, but I've already, I've already scaled it. It's where I want it to be. Um, so I'm going to draw it down to there and see what my weight is. Now when you're when you're working on tillering your bow and you're not there yet, you've got a big old chunky piece of wood and it's super heavy, you're just going to pull it down a few inches at a time um, with a long string. And then once you start getting, you know, somewhat reasonable, then you're going to go ahead and cut your notches in and you're going to make it a little bit shorter string and you're going to try and get a brace height on it. So see it's that brace right now. When you first start with a short string, your brace height might just be, you know, right there, a couple inches and that's okay. So you're going to put the string on, you're going to draw it and uh, while you draw it, you're going to be looking at the entire part of the limb but you're going to want the first bends to start right in the fades, right there. That's where you want to see it bend first. You don't want it bending out in the middle of the limb or something like that. You want to bend here, and then once you start working down further in the draw, then the rest of the limb should be incorporated. And so, the things that you want to look out for when tilling are called hinges and stiff spots. So a hinge, like if I have it right here and it's bending like, like this, that would be a hinge. Now. We don't, we don't want any hinges. We want it to be a nice, even bend. So how do we fix the hinge? Well, what you're gonna do, say I've got a hinge right here. It's just, the, the bow looks like it's folding, right, at this point. I'm going to draw with my pencil right there, draw an X so I don't touch it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove material from here and from here. And what's that, what that's gonna do is allow these parts to bend more and take stress off of there and that's what's going to fix a hinge. And so when you're doing this, uh, even if you're not close to your desired weight, you're not close to it yet, you want to take your time and just remove little bits at a time. You can do this with a planer, which it's, it's still pretty aggressive, or a, a scraper, which you can just take a piece of metal and scrape it, use a knife, the back side of your draw knife. I use my draw knife and I just scraped it. Okay, you can use sandpaper. I uh, wouldn't use uh, a power tool sander. I would just use the sandpaper and hand sand it because you don't want to be going and taking a whole bunch of wood off or else you might miss your weight or make a really bad hinge. Okay, so I already know how this one uh, turned out and I really like it. I'm going to go ahead and pull it and let y'all see what it looks like. Also, depending on the your style of shooting, if you shoot three fingers under, you're going to want that to be where your middle finger is. So right there is where I'm pulling from. I'm not pulling dead center of the bow. I'm pulling right there. And what you'll see is my bottom limb's a bit stiffer. And that's because I shoot three fingers under. And when you do that, you want the bottom limb to be a little bit stiffer because you're pulling more on that bottom limb than you are the top limb. And so uh, I don't see any hinges there. It looks pretty clean to me. Bottom limb's a little bit stiffer, about 43 pounds, which is right where I wanted it. Um, so the next thing you can do is you get your tillering set, and I like to till it with my quiver on because if you're going to be running a bow quiver, you don't want these areas bending. So I made pretty long fades. You know, the working limb doesn't start till right about there, so this isn't going to interfere with that. So after you do that. You can see the way we laid out the bow, just like the design we showed you all. We've got a real wide limb base and we cut down. Because this is thick, it's not bending, so it doesn't matter if you cut into it. So, as far as shelves go, you do not want to go halfway. You want to stay. There's some people that can get away with going halfway, but you know, I highly recommend that you don't do that. I've seen plenty of guys' bows split because they went, they cut in too far. And so, I went in about a third of the way and then my handle you can see is much narrower 
this is all personal preference. You can leave a, block, a blocking handle, you can narrow it down a little bit, you can you know do whatever you want with the handle. That's all preference, that's why I didn't really show it. As far as cutting it, um, I just took a little hacksaw, cut down to there, cut the wedge, and then I took, took it to a belt sander and just rolled it. When you're making these shelves, you don't want them to be perfectly flat. You want them to be rounded. That way when the arrow touches it, it's not touching the entire part. You can see it's just touching one contact point. And so what that does is when I shoot, if my hand is like this, it's not gonna have the whole leverage to completely toss it around. Now if it's against something like this flat, and my hand's moving, you know, it's gonna get a whole bunch of erratic arrow flight. So once you get that done, you need to seal it. You can seal it with, you know, stain and seal is what I'm going to use. You can use polyurethane. Uh, you want to do that to keep the bow from drying out. As far as uh, reflex, this one, I'll show you. All that reflex we put in it is gone. It's actually taken a little bit of set. And that's, that's just, you know, Whitewoods, they tend to do that more than Osage. Um, I feel like it would have been really bad had I not reflexed it. And uh, what I'm going to do, if it does lose some more weight, I'm going to go ahead and reflex it again which you're gonna have to want to put you're gonna want to put it back on the tillering board tilling tree and see what it looks like after you um, heat it flex it any of that stuff because it will change the tiller and so if it does keep losing weight you can heat your bow up like we showed you and reflex it again also whitewoods they respond really well to, to heat like torching it you don't want to like completely burn it but you want to see you know a brown a like golden brown and you'll just take your your blowtorch or whatever you're going to use and you're just going to heat it up and what that does is it's heat treating the wood and so that's going to add a little bit of weight it should help remove some of the set if you've taken a you know your form to it and uh, other than that that's basically a finished white wood bow they're pretty simple especially because uh, I just left that's that early sap wood so this is the bark came right off and we haven't done anything we didn't try to take it down any chaser ring any of that stuff and when you do that all you have to do is lay out your bow cut it out and start tilling so that's the finished white wood bow. so I'm gonna go ahead and shoot the bow I finished I'll get an angle from the side that way you can see the limbs work and then I'll get an angle from behind so you can see it shoot so that's uh, 15 yards got a group about the size of a softball which I'm pretty happy with it's my first day shooting this bow uh, since I got it finished um, as far as performance goes it shoots actually just as good as my Osage bow and my Osage bow is 50 pounds at 26 this is 43 pounds at 26 and this is shooting just as fast if not faster um, it has taken some limb set like I showed you earlier I'm probably gonna reflex it and uh, heat treat it try and get it up to the high 40s and I'm sure that will increase the speed as well um, all in all it's a much easier bow to make than the Osage bow because you don't have to chase a ring you can just lay it out and start working on it um, the video wasn't super detailed it was really simple but that's just because making the bow was super super simple uh, you get the stave you lay it out you cut your shape and then you can just start floor tilling as soon as it floor tillers Put on the tillering tree and it man it took me i've got exactly six hours in this bow and i had well over 20 something in my my osage belt and that's because i was super super uh slow with this i don't go very fast 
that's including the, the time it took to, to make my handle. Um, but if you've never made a bow or you're just used to using Osage, I think it's worth giving Whitewood, a uh, Whitewood bows a try, uh, whether it's ash, maple, elm, uh, hickory. Hickory is basically bulletproof. And so, uh, yep, that's it. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments, and I'll try and keep them coming.